Clay had never really believed the legends about Nightwings. Secret of dragons who could read minds? A hidden kingdom, kingdom that no one could find? A mystery queen? The power to see the future? The way they appeared from darkness to deliver prophecies that shaped the world? It all sounded like fairy tales, about as likely as the world ruled by scavengers instead of dragons. Besides, Clay knew Starflight, and Starflight was many things. Annoying, long-winded, smart, too serious. But he had no magical powers, and he was never, ever scary. But the next evening, when a dragon black as a bottomless pit loomed out of the shadows of the entrance tunnel, Clay felt all the rumors about Nightwings come crashing into his head like a collapsing rock wall. Morrowseer was even bigger than Kestrel, and five times more terrifying. He spread his jagged, bat-like wings and peered down the dragonets lined up in front of him. He had silver scales like stars on the underside of his wings, like Starflight did, but on him they seemed to glitter from a great distance and cast a cold glow. He looked like he could easily rip off of their heads in one bite. He also looked like he already hated the five dragonets, which wasn't what Clay had expected at all. Were they such a disappointment already? Maybe Marlseer was reading their minds and knew how confused they were about the prophecy. Or maybe he was seeing the future and his visions were all a failure, failure, failure. Clay could feel Sonny trembling at his side. He felt the same way, petrified in place, as if his scales were being slowly peeled off, one by one, while the giant Nightwing inspected them. On his other side, Starflight was more still than Clay had ever seen him. Starflight always froze when he was frightened. It was as if he'd hoped that by not moving, he'd disappear from view and the danger would pass by. Clay couldn't see Glory, but he knew when Morosir saw her. The huge black dragon stared down at the rain-winged dragonette for a small eternity. His snout twitched with ripples of disgust. A forked black tongue slipped over his teeth. Clay wished his own wings were as vast as the cavern itself so he could hide his friends from Morosir. He wished his talons were as huge as the stalagmites and as sharp as rock shards. He wished he were big enough to be brave and brave enough to be big. He had never wanted anything so much as he wanted to protect his friends from this tall, hissing, scornful, immensely dangerous dragon. He really, really hoped that Morosir wasn't reading his mind right now. Think about cows, think about cows, think about how delicious fat cows. Morosir pivoted his head slowly to glare down at Kestrel. He lifted one long claw and pointed at Glory. What is that? He said, his voice loaded with enough venom to kill 20 dragons in mid-flight. Starflight took a step back, and Clay saw Glory. She was sitting on her haunches with her long tail curled over her talons. Trails of violet and gold chased each other through her scales. Only the shades of flame around her feathery ears hinted that she was upset. She stared calmly back at Morosir. There was an accident, Kestrel said. We lost the Skywing egg, so we had to get another one from somewhere. From the Wayne Wings? Morosir interrupted scathingly. It was his idea, Kestrel snarled, whipping her tail toward Webbs. He brought her egg here. At least we have five dragonettes, said Webbs. That's what matters. Morosir peered down his long black snout at Glory. His eyes shifted to Sunny, who let out a tiny squeak and sank a little lower toward the ground. More like four and a half. Are you supposed to be the Sandwing? Don't you eat? What's wrong with you? There was a long, horrible pause while Sunny tried to squeak out an answer. She does, Tsunami blurted. She eats fine as much as anyone. It's not her fault she's small. Starflight chimed in, to Clay's surprise. She's a good fighter, Clay said, and so was Glory. Stop talking now, Morosira said, and the silence dropped over them. His sharp, menacing gaze landed on Clay. Think about cows, think about cows, think about cows. The tall Nightwing turned to the three guardians. Something has gone very wrong here. Yes! Tsunami burst in again. It has, and I can tell you what. We're treated like prisoners. We've never been even up outside the caves, not once. All we know about this world we're supposed to save is that we're learned in scrolls. We're supposed to be the most, dang most important dragonets in the world, but those three treat us like blind salamanders. Clay couldn't believe it. Wasn't she scared of Morosir too? Tsunami, hold your tongue, Dune snapped. I will not! 
please get us out of here, she said to Maro's ear. Take us away with you. Please don't, Clay thought. I mean, think about cows, think about cows. Now that he'd seen the Nightwing, he'd rather stay trapped here. Ungrateful lizard, Kestrel growled. Without warning, Morosir lunged at Tsunami. His teeth flashed like bright white lightning, darting toward her neck. It really is like the night sky falling on you, Clay thought, and then discovered he was moving too. He flung himself at the Nightwing's huge ridged back before he could stop to think about what he was doing. His claws sank into the small gaps between the shifting black scales, scrabbling for a hold. His tail thrashed as he tried to balance. Below him, he saw Tsunami rolling away and spinning to fight back. Her blue talons slashed at Marosiru's nose and underbelly. Clay tried frantically to remember his battle training. He flattened himself along the big dragon's back, snaked his neck forward, and bit down as hard as he could. Ow! His jaw exploded with pain and he reared back. In the black-on-black -black scales, it was impossible to find a weak spot. Marosir jumped away from Tsunami and shook his whole body violently. Clay lost his grip and went flying through the air. He landed with a jarring thud, sliding halfway into the river. As he staggered to his feet, he saw Tsunami and Marosir facing each other in battle positions. Marosir made a grinding noise deep in his throat. He stepped back and swung his tail around into view. Clinging to Marosir's tear, her teeth firmly planted in the vulnerable spot near the end, was Sunny. Clay wished he remember about that spot, which every dragon had, no matter which tribe they were from. Ha! That's a surprise! He pried Sunny loose with his front talons, as though she were just a tiny blood-sucking insect. That one will do, Morosir said, pointing at Tsunami. None of the big goo dragons had moved at all as he attacked their charges. Neither had Glory. Neither had Starflight. Clay staggered up beside his Nightwing friend who was doing an excellent imitation of a stalagmite. Starflight lowered his head and avoided Clay's eyes. And that one will do. Marosir nodded at Clay. Kestrel snorted. The Nightwing approved of him? Clay was confused. It wasn't as if Clay's attack had done any good. Even when Clay was defending his friend, apparently he couldn't get angry enough to drag out his inner monster. Couldn't Marosir hear everyone thinking about how Clay was going to let them all down? This one... Morosir studied Sunny, from her harmless tail to her weirdly golden scales and moss green eyes. We'll have to see. We followed the prophecy, Dune insisted. She wasn't in a clutch of eggs. I found her egg alone, buried out in the desert, just like the prophecy said. The Guardians never talked about where they got the dragon nuts eggs. Sunny just stared at Dune hopefully, but he fell silent under Morosir's dark eyes. As for you. Marosir said to Starflight, I assume you used your Nightwing powers to figure out I wasn't going to harm the Sea Wing. Perhaps you even had a vision of my visit today. No doubt you already know that I'm going to take you into the next cavern for a private conversation. Clay shuddered. A private conversation with Marosir sounded about as much fun as having his ears roasted. He did not envy Starflight as the two Nightwings slithered toward the study room. Morosir paused in the archway and looked back at the guardians. We'll talk about her later. He didn't look at Glory, but everyone else did. She flicked her ears and raised her chin a little higher as Morosir's footsteps faded down the tunnel. What does that mean? Clay worried. What was there to talk about? Stupid sea wing! Kestrel shot across the cave and struck Tsunami's snout. Complaining to the first strange dragon you see? Trying to make us look bad? Whining about your life after all we've given up for you? If you hate this too, why don't you let us go? Tsunami shout back. This is for your safety, Webbs interjected. His voice was gentler than Kestrel's, but Clay could tell he was angry from the way his long blue-green tail lashed on the floor. That's what all this is for. The Talons of Peace need you to survive long enough to fulfill the prophecy. You have no idea how many dragons would love to get their claws on you five. Or what they'd do to you if they did, Dune growled. Our job is to keep you alive, Kestrel said, or else I'd have strangled you myself a long time ago. Great, Tsunami said. Well, it's been a terrific life. Thanks very much. Kestrel made the hissing, fire is coming noise. Clay grabbed Tsunami's tail and tugged her back toward the river. We are 
grateful, Sunny said, jumping in front of Kestrel. She stood up on her back legs, not even half the red dragon size. Her golden ears twitched. It would be much better to be alive than not, than not alive. We're glad you keep us that way. Really, we are. Come on, Webb said. He prodded Kestrel and Doom toward their cave. We need to talk. Now he has something to say, Kestrel grumbled as the three of them clambered over the broken stalagmites. Tsunami threw herself into the river and sank to the bottom in a steam of furious bubbles, where she curled up with her talons over her head. It got very quiet in the cave. Sunny and Clay exchanged glances, then looked over at Glory. The Rainwing was still sitting in the same spot, with her tail still neatly curled around her feet. She yawned. Clay wished he could ever be that calm. It was as if nothing bothered her at all. Are you all right? Clay asked. He came around and sat in front of her, studying her face. Sunny sidled up beside Glory, brushing her violet wings with her own smaller golden ones. Of course, Glory said. I mean, we knew that was going to happen. It's not like the miners have been talking about how awesome I am this whole time. But you are, Clay said. Glory tilted her head at him. Awesome, he insisted. We, they just don't see... They see a rain wing, she said with a shrug. I don't care. It's their own fault for bringing me here. Why don't you fight Moros here when we did? Sonny asked. Then maybe he'd know how brave and fierce you are too. Why bother? Glory said. It was obviously a test, and I've already failed. A splotch of sky blue scales on her back pulsed. Then the color began to spread across her other scales, eating up the purple and gold. Well, we don't care what the prophecy says or what Morosira thinks, Clay said stoutly. You're our fifth dragon in. We don't want anyone else. Glory gave him a rueful look. That's very sweet. She yawned again. I'm going to take a nap. Now, Sunny said alarmed, is that a good idea? Glory fell asleep every day, usually after lunch, for a couple hours. But Clay had expected her to stay awake while Morosira was around. He knew he wouldn't want the big dragon to catch him sleeping. He glanced at the tunnel to the study room, wondering uneasily how far the Nightwing's telepathy reached and whether he could read Clay's mind through rock. I'm tired, Glory snapped, and they all think I'm lazy anyway. Nothing I can do can change that. Clay knew Glory wasn't lazy. She worked harder than everyone at battle training and learning the Dragon Wars history, even though none of the big dragons ever noticed. She just had to nap in the middle of the day, probably for some rain wing reason. Although it didn't seem to help. Glory was just as prickly and tired after napping as she was before. Wake me if anything exciting happens, Glory said. But make sure it's actually exciting, not sunny exciting. She gave Sunny a friendly nudge with her snout, and the sandwing squeaked in protest. I don't think everything is exciting, Sunny flapped her wings, but you guys don't think enough things are exciting. Think of it this way, Glory said. Time to leave the caves and fulfill the prophecy. Exciting. You caught another weird-looking white crab in the river? Not exciting. Got it? She poked Sunny again, uncurled her tail, now fully blue, and slipped inside her sleeping cave. Sunny blinked at Clay. I know, he said. That last crab really was weird looking. It was, wasn't it? She said. I wouldn't have minded if you woken me up to see it, Clay added kindly. Well, good, she said. I know. That's why you got half, you got to eat half of it instead of anyone else. She headed for her favorite stalagmite and started to climb it, hooking her claws in the holes that dotted the bulbous shape. Clay clambered up the rocks beside her. Hey, Sonny, what would you think about running away? She paused and looked at him with shocked green eyes. You mean leave caves without our guardians? Oh, no, we couldn't. We have to do what the prophecy says. Do we? He asked. I mean, we do, he said quickly as she nearly lost her grip on the stalagmite and surprised. But what if the talents don't understand the prophecy any better than we do? Maybe we just need to get out and stop the war our own way. Sunny settled on top of the stalagmite and coiled her tail around it, balancing on her back legs. She reached up toward the stalactites that were poking sharply down from the top of the cave. I don't think that's a good idea, Clay. If we were to just follow the prophecy, everything will be all right. Her claws batted at the tip of the lowest stalactite, but she was still too small to reach it. She sat back down with a frustrated sigh. Clay glanced at the soft blue glow coming from Glory's cave. Follow the prophecy. 
but he couldn't help thinking that a real prophecy would have included glory. What if the prophecy was wrong? 